Well, so you have this larger cultural moment, right, which you mentioned, which uh, there I'm thinking of something like Anna Delvey and just kind of hustle culture in Silicon Valley and people who are willing to scam to get ahead. So there's that. And then the mentor, of course, for Santos in a big way is Donald Trump. Very directly so. You know, Santos himself would follow Trump around, went down to Mar-a-Lago and would even, you know, when sort of Trump uh, aides and sort of um, appointees were around New York, he would go and take a look at them, film their events, sort of be a fanboy. And I think he learned a lot from Trump. His cadence models Trump in a lot of ways, and of course, his lying as well. But what does it mean then for the future of the party if, if so many of the people who are getting the most attention and the most shine have made themselves in that model? So it was it took a long time for George Santos to be kicked out of Congress, right? He absolutely refused to resign. I think there were a lot of people early on when he got elected who thought this isn't going to last a long time, you know? He either won't even take his seat or he'll be pushed out immediately or he'll leave himself. He totally refused to do that, right? And that's a level of shamelessness on his part that I think is very different from previous members of Congress or politicians. And then, of course, you have the Republican leadership's failure to push him out, right? And there was a lot known about what he'd done very early on. He was indicted with a lot of charges in the spring, right? Even but, more but charges say, piled on top in the fall. I don't want to interrupt you, so forgive me, but there, were, there was even sense of the fraud element of this prior to that, right? Even when he was a candidate, there were alarms raised that were raised through the party infrastructure itself and ignored. Why was it ignored? How was it ignored? And is it your sense? I get that you are, you know, a reporter on a story, but you're also mm -hmm. deep in this. If there is a sense of how do you not allow this to happen again? And is part of the answer in making sure that there are mechanisms within the party that when these flags are raised about a candidate before they've even taken office, that they're taken more seriously? Well, you know, one thing I write about in the book is how uh, there have been some consequences after Santos won. One is that there's been this kind of mini boom in vulnerability studies, which these are these things that candidates do uh, sort of assign for themselves to look at their own background, make sure that they know everything that an opponent is going to use to hit them. And so there have been more of those. Um, Obviously, that's a temporary thing. We'll see if that lasts. The problem, right, was that, uh, like you said, a lot of things were known about Santos within high-ranking members of the party early on, but he was a guy that was, you know, maybe going to be able to win this seat because of this crazy political moment we were in and all the lies he was telling kind of matched the moment. He wasn't just sort of benefiting from this red wave in New York. He was kind of stirring it himself. I write in the book about he was like knee deep in snow at an anti-mask rally, you know, on Long Island, um, something that some uh, candidates would sort of shy away from. He never shies away from anything.